welcome to The Head Trash Show. My name is Alexia Leachman and I'm the founder of Head Trash, home to the new and unique Head Trash Clearance Method that removes unwanted negative thoughts, feelings and emotions quickly and effectively so that you can achieve clarity, confidence and contentment in your life. My goal with this podcast is to teach you how to create some headspace by helping you to unpick what's blocking you and sharing some tips and how-tos for clearing it. Tune in every week as I share simple strategies to help you to achieve confidence and clarity in your life and business. To find out how to clear your head trash quickly and effectively using our unique method, pop over to headtrash.com to get our free download and subscribe for our free head trash clearance updates. And now for the show. Hello and welcome back to The Head Trash Show. This is me, your host, Alexia Leachman. And thank you so much for joining me today. Well, we are now in the final weeks before Christmas. So how are you getting on with your Christmas shopping? And are you starting to panic about Christmas? Are there aspects of Christmas that are starting to stress you out? Well, that's what I'm going to be talking about in today's show. I've got Julian Hall back on the show, who was on the show a few weeks ago talking about anger. And he's going to be sharing with me some of the aspects of Christmas and the festive season that stress us out. Because yes, it is a very stressful time of year for many, even though we're trying to pretend to be happy. Maybe we are happy, but it's this idea that we have to be happy. And sometimes that expectation can just put too much on us. But there's lots of other aspects to Christmas and the festive season that can get us stressed. So stay tuned while I talk that through with Julian. But before I do, I just want to share a few little bits of update with you about what's happening here at Head Trash. And first of all, I want to thank my listeners, those of you that have nominated me in the Podcast Awards 2013 that are being held in Las Vegas in January. I was amazed when last week I received an email from them to say that this podcast had been nominated. I mean, stunned does not even cover it. So if you're one of the people that has nominated this show, then Honestly, thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. I was completely overwhelmed when I noticed that I'd been nominated and I'm not able to make it through to the finalists because the podcast wasn't running in January 13. But believe me, now that I know these podcast awards exist, Next year, I'm going to be going for it and making sure that I'm in that list of nominees again. So I'm probably going to be making a little bit of a song and dance about this next year. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to update you on was that I'm going to be doing a couple of live events. Well, quite a few live events in the new year in the Nottingham area in the UK. So they're go- they're being released on the website over the next few days. Some of them might already be up already by the time that you listen to this. So if you're up for clearing some head trash, we've got the big head trash clear out, which is a two day weekend event where I'm going to be joined by the uh, sports hypnotist that's worked with Team GB and he works with world champions and Olympic athletes. And he'll be joining me for a two day event where we're going to be helping you to clear your head trash and sharing some brilliant and simple techniques for you to just clear your stuff. So if you're up for coming and spending two days in the new year to clear some of your stuff, then go to the website and look under the events section. I'll also be sending some information out to subscribers of my list as well. So if you're on the list, you will find out more about it. But there are some other events we'll be running as well. Um, Events to help you with productivity, to help you with stress and also to help you build your confidence. So if you're based in the UK and you'd like to come and have your head trash kit, learn a little bit more about the technique, have it in person, try it out and with my guidance and um, knowing that you're doing it right, then we've got some events lined up for you in the new year. So do come and check the website. Anyway, enough of me and what I'm going on about head trash. Let's go on to today's show. So I'm going to be speaking to Julian in a short while and some of the things that we're going to be talking about include, you know, the stress of travelling, the stress of shopping, of food, of office parties, of, you know, that time of year when you, remembering those that are no longer with us, all those and more. But Julian also will be sharing some brilliant ways to help us cope and not get so stressed at Christmas so that we really can enjoy this time of year and, and relish it for what it is. Is, which is an opportunity to take time out and spend it with the people that we love. So here is a here is when I spoke to Julian earlier this week about Christmas and he has got the office party going on in the background or preparations for. So if there is a little bit of noise, I do apologise about that. Now over to the chat with Julian. 
Well, thank you for joining me today, Julian. And how are you? Are you enjoying the Christmas festivities? I'm very good, thank you. Yeah, we've got um, we've got a little bit of Christmas music piped gently in the background. Yeah. We're warming ourselves up and uh, we're writing Christmas cards as well as we speak. So Fantastic. Very nice. So in the lead up to Christmas, you were sharing with me a really interesting stat about bookings for anger and stress workshops. Can you share that with my listeners? Because I thought that was fascinating. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's a sort of um, behavioural thing we've noticed over the last three years, which is where um, bookings for our stress courses, our one-day stress courses, go up at the beginning of December as if everybody starts realising that there's stress coming and they need to do something about it. Um, But conversely, the bookings for our pure anger management weekends go down. And uh, we, we've noticed, we, we've spoken to our clients and they admit this as well, which is that basically they get to December and the, the people have an unhealthy relationship with anger and it's affecting their relationships. They pretty much go into a sort of zone that says, look, if I spend loads of money and put my head down and pretend everything will be OK, then everything will be OK. Um, the problem is normally by the time they spent a compressed amount of time with the relatives and everything else, everything isn't OK. And that's when we notice that we get a lot more inquiries going on, probably from about the 6th or 7th of of January onwards, which of course is when every divorce lawyer has their busiest time of year as well. Mm, and I think you said that they're just not allowed to book their holiday at that time of year, is that right? No, they're not. Well, I, th- I think the words I used was that they, they, they'd be grossly stupid if they booked a holiday <laughs> in the early days of January if you're a divorce lawyer, because it literally is that, that's the time when they get their doors beaten down with people saying, I can't stand it anymore. Mm. So what kind of things then are people getting really stressed about over Christmas? What, what typical things do you come across? Um, I, I think the, the, the greatest, is that the number one thing is spending a lot of time in a compressed environment um, with this high expectation that you're going to enjoy yourself with people that you try to avoid for most of the year. Um, and, and that's really, that's it in like a, a nutshell, a but nutshell. There's, there's lots of different areas there. There's, there's, there's relatives, there's expectations, there's forcing yourself together and forced, forced festivities. You know, it's the idea mm. of festivity to be that you get together because you want to and you want to enjoy yourself and you want to enjoy each other's company. Mm. But there seems to be this thing where we force ourselves to do these things. So we turn mm. up with glum expressions, expectations it's all going to turn out badly. And uh, you know what, if you expect something's going to turn out badly, normally it does. And I guess also in the lead up to Christmas, when everybody's kind of got that on their mind, but then the idea that they have to spend on these people as well. And maybe, and not whether, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm talking about these people, like, you know, people don't like their family. Obviously, a lot of people (laughs) love their family and are delighted to spend on their family. But, you know, it's this spending idea that, you know, people are thinking, my God, the presents are going to cost me two, three hundred, four hundred, if not more pounds. And I just don't have it. I just don't have that money. Absolutely, yeah, and and this and this generation we're breeding of of people comparing everything and comparing the presents and people sharing stuff online. I've seen children sharing Christmas lists on Facebook and blatantly asking their parents for presents on Facebook in public, like it's some kind of public shaming. You know, if I do it in public, then I'm forcing my parents mm-hmm. to buy these presents for me and and things like that. And the the pressure just goes up and up and up mm-hmm. and actually a few years ago um, uh, my sister and I um, we just had a, a an honest conversation that said we both find it really really difficult buying presents for each other every year um, so we agreed that between the adults in our family we would stop buying Christmas presents for each other oh. um, and uh, what we would do is devote the budget to buying Christmas presents for the children and making it as enjoyable a Christmas for them yeah. um, but as the parents go we, we, we don't really need a great deal so we're happy to enjoy each other's company and spend time together but we don't just spend that much money mm-hmm. so just going back to the family issue then you know sort of um what 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 are the other ways that do you think we struggle with the, the family members that we're having to deal with what you know you mentioned sort of having to spend time with people that maybe we're avoiding for the most part of the year but what other kind of stresses do you think might be affecting people at this time of year when it comes to families yeah, I, well, I think there's, there, there is, first of all, the fact that um, you know, there is that old phrase, we can yeah. we can choose our friends, but we can't choose our family. And quite a lot of people are in positions where they don't see family that often. Mm-hmm. And I think, actually, when you don't see people very often, the differences you have in your personality and the differences in the issues and the, and the values, beliefs, differences that you have... Mm-hmm 
can become quite starkly you know resonant and and they they're, they're outlined even more when you don't see each other that often mm. um and then the little ticks and the little issues you have with people that you're predicting are going to come up you know what they do come up and yeah. they become even more obvious because again you haven't seen them for ages and and i find a useful tip for putting up with all those little issues that the that you have with other people is to remind yourself that they've probably got just as many little issues about you yeah. as you have with them and if they can be tolerant of me then maybe i can actually practice being tolerant of them as well mm. and uh, maybe even learn to appreciate them for the little tips you know yeah 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 now i think one thing as well that i think affects families as well is that sort of remembering those that are no longer with us and that can be very hard on families that have maybe you know, whether there's been a, a divorce or a separation in the family or whether somebody has passed on during the year or, you know, and that's a time of year when they're usually there. And that can kind of affect families quite a lot as well, can't it? Yeah, they can. And we've, we've actually experienced that in our family ourselves this year. And, uh, and I'm not saying this is the right way to do it, but the person who's perhaps grieving the most and the person who's going through that year of firsts, you know, the, the first year without them, the first Christmas without them and everything else, is literally just to offer them as much choice as possible, but no enforced joining in. Yeah. So um, in our family, we have someone who, who is deeply, deeply grieving at the moment. And we said, look, you're welcome to come around on Christmas Day, but, but you do whatever you want to. Yeah. And they know they've got options and, and they know they can they can be flexible and they can come yeah. and go as they want to. And, and I think that's an important thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Having been through a Christmas like that myself, it's very, very difficult. And I, you know, that's one time of year where you just don't want the reminders and it's just there all the time. It's a really hard place for people to be at that time of year, I think. And that can really add to the stress. Definitely. And I, and I was I, I was talking to someone just only, only the other day sharing sharing the, the issues we've had this year. And it was amazing how they resonated with my stepfather um, in as much as they said their grief was was an absolute physical pain for them. You know, and uh, I think what I've learned this year more than anything else is um, not to expect everybody to grieve the same way I do and to allow yeah. everybody to do it in their own way. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. So there's a message of tolerance that you're bringing forth this conversation yeah, a, so far. a huge amount yeah we've, yeah we've gone quite deep there because that's you know that's about sadness and that's about pain mm. but there's another whole other level of tolerance which is all about the fact that we as humans are hugely massively judgmental human beings we're mm. very very good at casting our judgments around and judging other people and it's worthwhile just catching ourselves when we're judging other people and, and asking ourselves well actually do i really need to judge them for that and how many judgments do you think they've got of me yeah yeah. You know, because these things are normally flying back and forth. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And um, <clears throat> now what about sort of the office environment? And I'm just, you know, just to lighten things up a little bit, you know, thinking about these stresses in the office and maybe the office party and all the delicate potential situations that can arise from people drinking a little bit too much at the Christmas party. What kind of, you know, d does that come across as being a big stress factor for you in your work? We, we, yeah, we do find people getting quite, quite stressed by that. And uh, the, the, the biggest issue really often seems to be the fact that in an office you've got um, a group of disparate individuals, all with different personalities. They're all really there for one reason, which is that they're there to work. But that doesn't mean that they would naturally choose to socialise with each other. Um, and then again, there's this sort of feeling of enforced festivity coming down the line. And certain people in the office will be feeling really, really quite nervous and quite tense about this. And quite typically, they will be the more introverted members of the team. And those people that are thinking, you know what, I like coming to work I enjoy my job but I don't particularly want to socialize and to feel mm. forced into that position mm. could make it quite difficult for them mm. um, equally they might like to socialize but they might not like to do it in the way that everybody else wants to so um, when we're talking to organizations we just encourage them to spend as long as they can consulting with their staff and trying to find a way where they can please most of the people mm. most of the time yeah. and have a night out that might include activities that everybody can enjoy um, mm. rather than literally going the way of the leader or the person who's been delegated to in order of organising the party and uh, and half the people sitting there thinking well this is not what I wanted to do at all. I oh, know as somebody who has organised office Christmas parties in the past now I'm worried that I've got everyone to go along something they didn't want to go to <laughs> well I'd, I'd be guilty of exactly the same thing because you know it's like when delegates come on with workshops and they say hey we love the biscuits I say well that's really nice but all I do is I buy biscuits that I like <laughs> yes. and if you happen to like them that's great you know and it's the same when I've organized Christmas festivities I've gone running ahead leadership forward saying look this would be a great time because it's what I want to do yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it's what you deserve as organizer 
yeah. Um, now, the other thing I think that stresses people out at Christmas is things like the food. I mean, yes, there's all this food. You know, we all talk about what are we... I mean, I've just ordered my Christmas bird this morning, which is going to be goose, by the way. Um, but, you know, the, the idea of what are we going to be... You know, the idea of putting on all this weight and, and being force-fed stuff, you know, and having to sit around without doing much activity... And yet we're kind of pigging out a bit. And, you know, this is the kind of stuff that creates disease in the body that makes us ill, actually. But I'm sure that this level of stress around the food, the putting on the weight, the eating constantly and just being complete couch potatoes, that must be a huge stress factor, is it not? Definitely. I, for, for one, personally, I'm already stressing about putting weight on because I'm feeling a little bit body conscious at the moment and I can see ahead of me now for the next two weeks a series of social events that all involve, if they don't involve drink, they certainly involve a lot of food. So I'm already stressing about the fact that I'm going to put weight on. So, you know, I'm already starting to take steps to be a little bit more careful and just, you know, uh, allow myself the odd treat but not go too, not go too far. Um, I think the other thing with the food is, is the person who's preparing it and the pressure that they feel under yeah. and the immense weight of expectation to hold the perfect Christmas and the perfect dinner party and cook the food perfectly on time etc 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 and you know what in, in our house um, we always end up with the target time of about I don't know say we're going to sit down to eat at one o'clock and we've never sat down and eaten before about 2 30 in the afternoon yeah. you know in other words we're fairly relaxed about it we know we're not going to get there on time and we're actually we're just going to enjoy ourselves and enjoy each other's company mm -hmm. um, but my tips for helping with that is if you're the person organizing the food and you're the person to do anything is, is learn to delegate yeah. because if you've got a mob of people coming to your house actually most of them would really like to feel useful and most of them would really like to help and feel they've contributed mm -hmm. so don't shut yourself away in this steamy hot tiny kitchen with pans bubbling and and stressing about whether everything's coming out on time invite people in, get people joining in and, and get some help going it can become a communal activity mm -hmm. well that, that's the kind of plan I'm taking because I've got Christmas at mine this year and we've got um, family coming over and we've already, I've already delegated some of the shopping so somebody's got all the C's to buy which is champagne, chocolate and crackers and cheese <laughs> I think that's how we remember well that's it, one. that's all you need <laughs> exactly and uh, yeah and then also I've made sure that the two other people there are very good cooks and incredibly good at chopping and preparing food oh. so we are going to have a very uh, yeah, a very delicate, well, a well delegated Christmas preparation. I think that's where the main party is going to be happening. It's in the kitchen, as all good parties happen, I think. In the exactly. Kitchen. So that's how I'm going to hopefully prevent myself from getting into a right old tears over Christmas. Um, what else do you think? I mean, I'm thinking maybe about traveling. That's also a big stress factor, isn't it? The idea of having to bundle the whole family into a car and do some kind of three hour drive cross country with all the presents and bad weather and everybody else and using up your holiday time just to travel to go and spend time maybe with people that you don't want to spend time with that must yeah, be yeah. a bit of a nightmare don't you think I I, I, th I think it is. And, and you know what? The funny thing is we do this in almost every holiday situation. It's not necessarily just Christmas. Um, it's summer holidays as well. Is that, you know, people decide to drive down the M5 to Cornwall for their summer holidays at the same time as everybody else. And then they're sitting, getting stressed out um, with huge excitement from the children who want to get there and want to enjoy themselves, you know. Huge feeling of, of dread from the parents who've got to do all the work when they get there, etc., etc., etc. And sitting for three hours in a traffic jam. And then we do it at Christmas time as well, you know. Yeah. It strikes me we should. One of the things we do is we just choose different times to travel. Yeah. yeah. Um, and we we will leave at five in the morning, or we'll leave at seven o'clock at night, or something like that. And and we will make sure that we have a journey that's sort of fairly traffic free, mm. um, and a fairly enjoyable journey. But mm. you know what else can you do with with journeys? They're there. You have to have them. Put in regular breaks. Organise games for the children to enjoy. And then I think just relax into it. Really. Mm -hmm. Have a good journey. Yeah. And I think the worst, I think one of the maybe the worst stresses that some people have is those people with no plans at all. You know, maybe those people that don't have a family, that have lost touch with their friends and that haven't got anything planned or that, you know, maybe they have got friends, but they don't, don't feel very connected to them. And so when they get asked, what are you doing at Christmas? It's a bit of a don't know. And, you know, there's going to be a number of people out there that are going to be experiencing no plans and no opportunities for spending time in a trapped environment with people they don't like. Maybe they would relish the chance. <laughs> 
to be stuck with people they don't like for Christmas, you know, but rather than spending it on their own. They would, they would. But equally, you know what, there's quite a few out there that would quite like the time on their own as well. And, and we have to be able to respect that as well. And I think it's about um, offering people an opportunity to, to come into our lives and enjoy themselves if they want to, mm. without putting them under any pressure mm. as well and just giving them a genuine chance to make choice. Mm. And if they say no, thank you, us not being offended by the fact they've said no, thank you. Um, at the same time as just being able to encourage them to enjoy themselves should they want to, you know. And, and I've, I've experienced, I'm a serial rescuer. And my wife dreads it when I come home about a week before Christmas to say, I've had a great idea. It involves inviting one of the neighbours or an old business colleague who I know is on his own at Christmas. And as my wife will be listening to this, she'll be nodding her head and cringing, thinking, when's the next person he's going to invite round coming, you know. Um, but, uh, but I've learned now just to, first of all, consult my wife. Um, and, <laughs> Very wise. <laughs> and second of all, with these people I invite, it's just say to them, look, you know, we're having a bit of an open house in the afternoon. You can come around for a drink and just sit and watch a film with you're welcome to. Mm. Equally, if you don't want to, we're not worried, mm. you know. Um, but we're just letting you know you're welcome. Mm. And, and we just leave it at that. Yeah. So I'm just thinking some of the themes that have come through from this chat so far is really this idea of tolerance and being allowing people to have the freedom, the choice and the flexibility to choose what they want to do, who they want to be with, how they want to behave and all that kind of stuff. Is that kind of... Yeah, definitely, because I, th I think this is the problem with, with Christmas. It's almost become over-ritualised and over... Um, I'm losing my words here, but I'm thinking it's that over-choreograph yeah. in a way and there's huge pressure and expectation. And if we can just take the pressure off ourselves and remove the expectations from ourselves and then remove the expectations we place upon others as well, then, you know, I guess it's that situation where aren't the nicest gifts you receive the ones that you don't expect to receive? Mm. You know, aren't the nicest surprises the person who walks in the door that you didn't expect to see? Mm. You know, so if you let go of all expectations of other people and let go of the expectations upon yourselves, it's amazing what a wonderful time you can have in quite a simple way as well. Mm. But what happens, I mean, there's going to be, you know, sort of there's, I would imagine there's quite a few people where they might want to let go of that, but then they have to deal with other people kind of looking at them funny as if, as if to say, well, hang on a minute, you should be doing X. And, and how do you, what advice do you have to people that have to deal with other people's expectations of them where they kind of want to say, look, you know, I, I just want to let go of all this. I'm, I'm okay not doing this. Why are you making me now feel guilty for yeah. doing that? that that's a very good point, and I, that could leave me on quite a rant and a ramble. But I, I start off with the fact that um, the only person's feelings who I can own are my own. Mm. I can't own anybody else's. So if I'm being forced to go and do something that I really don't want to do and I'm not going to enjoy it, then I'm actually now the one who's responsible for you know not having a good time because I'm allowing myself to be corralled into something that I really don't want to do. Mm. Now, if I'm going to say, by sit, sitting down and saying, actually, I don't want to do that, I'd rather have some time on my own, or I don't want to do that, I'm going to go and do this, that I'm now responsible for making other people unhappy. Well, I'm not. Mm. You know, I can, I can assert myself in a gentle, healthy way without hurting people's feelings. But if people are going to take offence, that's their issue, not mine. Mm. So, you know, the only person's feelings I can really take responsibility for are mine, and, mm. and, and that's what I'm going to do. Mm. That said, you know, I've also found that most of these things that I enter into, if I enter into them with the right spirit and the right attitude, I actually end up having a really good time. So, so I can do these things. It's about just deciding to enjoy myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So essentially, you know, if we have to try and sort of wrap up the kind of advice or how, you know, helping people to cope with and to prepare themselves adequately to <clears throat> enable themselves to have the best Christmas that means they've enjoyed themselves, they had a really good time, but also maybe to try and uh, preempt the potential stresses and minimise them if they can in advance. What kind of, you know, what final tips would you share? I think it's, it's, all wrapped, it's all wrapped up in that um, lower your expectations of yourself, take the pressure off yourself and then in turn start taking the pressure off other people, mm. reduce your expectations of them and then make a decision to enjoy yourself. Get up that morning and say, I'm just going to have a really, really nice day yeah. today. Yeah. I am. You know, yeah. not it's going to be perfect. Not everybody else is going to behave perfectly, but I'm going to have a really, really nice time. 
Well, thank you for that, Julian. And I hope that you have a merry, merry Christmas too. And I hope that you enjoy your office festivities that I can tell are all being prepared in the background as we speak. They are, they are. And you wouldn't believe what we've got going on. So um, anyone who knows me on Facebook, look out for the pictures over the next couple of weeks. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining me today, Julian. It's a pleasure as always, Alexia. Thank you. You've just been listening to Alexia Leachman here on The Head Trash Show. If you enjoyed the show, I'd really appreciate you leaving a review here on iTunes. And don't forget to pop over to headtrash.com to get your copy of our free Five Steps to Clearing Head Trash Guide. So now stay tuned for upcoming episodes and more tips and how-tos for clearing your head trash and reclaiming your headspace. Until next time, bye for now.